Have you already started to notice that store shelves are getting increasingly emptier? Have you realized that some basic items have become impossible to find? If so, you're definitely not alone. All across America, consumers are having to deal with shortages of food, staples, and a series of other everyday items as the supply chain's crisis is only getting worse. At this point, it seems that we can only hope for things not to escalate any further. Otherwise, we might see people fighting over a can of beans and a pack of toilet paper just as we've seen during the waves of panic buying last year. But sadly, the truth is that global supply chains are now under more strain than ever before, and industry executives have been warning in recent days that consumers have not yet seen the worst of this crisis. In the coming holiday season, things may get much more complicated. Even though people are trying to keep a positive mindset that things will eventually get better, Many events are unfolding all over the world right now that are likely to dramatically aggravate supply chain problems and result in shipping delays and even more shortages. At this point, many local news outlets are already reporting massive shortages in their local areas, although the mainstream media hasn't covered the national shortages that are happening everywhere in the country just yet. Whether they're trying not to spread panic and unleash a panic buying frenzy again, or they are deliberately choosing not to tell the people the truth. The reality is that many people cannot find some of their favorite and essential items since the health crisis started. According to a recent report by Nexstar Media Wire, store employees say product demand is 25% greater than it was in 2019. One year after the virus outbreak caused the steepest economic fall and job losses on record, the speed of the rebound has been so unexpectedly swift that many companies simply can't fill jobs or acquire enough supplies to meet a pent-up burst of customer demand. The worker shortage in many industries is causing employers to raise wages and in some cases raise prices to offset their higher labor costs. All across the country, the shortage of workers is making it harder for retailers to unload containers, transport their products, and to restock their shelves so that customers can find what they want and need. As a consequence, the inventory to sales ratio for U.S. retailers has been pushed to the lowest level on record. Data compiled by Wolf Richter from WolfStreet.com has shown that in April, May, and June, the inventory to sales ratio of around 1.06, or about 33 days supply, was at the lowest point in the data going back to 1992. In the years before the pandemic, the overall ratio was around 1.5, providing 45 days of supply. This enormous imbalance between supply and demand is intensifying at a time when global events have started to accelerate. Therefore, there's no end in sight for the current shortages, particularly because the Delta variant has been spreading across Asian ports, which are key to global trade. In China, after one worker was detected with the virus, authorities decided to shut down one of the busiest port terminals in the entire world indefinitely. Last Wednesday, Maishan, a key terminal at China's Ningbo Zushan port, has been closed. An important member of the port of the Ningbo Port Group Company, which operates the port, also resigned Wednesday, reported China Securities Daily, adding more pressure to the strained port operations. The closure is raising fears of further disruptions to world trade that could derail the global economy's recovery. The biggest problem is that many countries, including the United States, are extremely dependent on goods from China. At the same time, many countries tend to look up to China and follow their measures. And in a case of virus outbreaks getting out of control, those countries are likely to also institute strict lockdowns and movement restrictions, 
which could make it harder and harder to move goods around the world on an efficient basis. Meanwhile, another major factor supply chains are having to deal with is a historic global shipping container shortage. The demand for shipping containers is outstripping the supply by such a great scale that global shipping container rates have soared to levels we have never seen before. In the US, companies are paying up to $32,000 for a single container coming from China. And once those containers arrive on our coast and get delivered at ports, there aren't enough port workers to unload them all. For that reason, it's been taking months for products that are made in China to get to our stores. And some of them may never arrive at all. That's the case of any product that might contain a computer chip. The global shortage of computer chips is going from bad to worse. It's having a devastating impact on thousands of industries. For example, just this year, the global auto industry is expecting a deep collapse in production that will lead to tens of billions in losses. Bloomberg reported that Volkswagen's main plant is only going to be running on its early shift after summer break due to the lack of supply. Its plant in Wolfsburg, Germany, is the world's biggest car plant and employs about 60,000 people. Moreover, Audi is also halting operations and Toyota have announced a huge cut in production. Global shortages of semiconductors could wind up cutting worldwide production of automobiles this year by about 7.1 million vehicles, Bloomberg has predicted. An IHS report stated that the situation is still fraught with challenges. We're also seeking additional volatility due to lockdown measures in Malaysia, where many back-end chip packaging and testing operations are performed. Toyota said it was planning to stop 14 plants next month while lowering its production by 40%. Toyota Purchasing Group Chief Officer Kazunari Kamukura said this week, especially in Southeast Asia, the virus outbreaks and the lockdowns are impacting our local suppliers. The more contagious variant is once again leading to mass shutdowns and slowdown production just as most countries were getting ready to officially reopen and consumer demand until the end of the year is only expected to grow. Now that the holiday season is right round the corner, due to the series of supply chain bottlenecks, many in the retail industry are anticipating complete and utter chaos. In a recent study conducted by Reuters, Nearly a dozen suppliers and retailers of everything from toys to computer equipment in the United States and Europe were surveyed. They found that all of the companies expect weeks-long delays in holiday inventory due to shipping bottlenecks, including a global container shortage and the recent outbreak-related closure of the southern Chinese port of Yantian, which serves manufacturers near Shenzhen. According to the study, there's still a mounting risk for retailers to go out of stock for items just as customers are ready to open their wallets to freely spend on toys, on clothing, other items for the holiday period. One executive that was interviewed by Reuters said that we are heading for another period of turbulence at the stores. Isaac Larian, chief executive of Los Angeles-based MGA Entertainment Inc., says it's gonna be a major, major mess. MGA sells several toy brands to Amazon, Walmart, and Target. His company has millions of products stuck in hundreds of containers at the Antian port. If he can't get enough inventory for his retail clients in time, it's gonna hurt the Christmas sales big time, Larian said. Another executive openly admitted that he's lost all hope for a holiday restock of laptop docking stations and some other computer equipment he sells via Amazon and other retailers. He revealed it can take more than 12 months to get some of his top-selling products, which rely on those hard-to-find computer chips. It's too late for Christmas, lamented Bernie Thompson, the founder of Washington-based Pluggable Technologies. Unfortunately, the outlook for the immediate future of the U.S. economy seems quite gloomy, and hope seems to be in short supply too. Even if nothing else goes wrong, 
It could take years for supply chains to normalize, and considering how fast things are changing, another devastating crisis can suddenly erupt and take us back to square one. As inventory levels continue to go down, prices are going up to compensate. However, several economists are becoming increasingly more alarmed as the price hikes have hit food staples all over the world. Whether at supermarkets, corner stores, or open-air markets, prices for food have been surging in much of the world, forcing families to make tough decisions about their diets. Meat is often the first to go, ceding space to less expensive proteins such as dairy, eggs, or beans. In some households, a glass of milk has become a luxury, reserved only for children. Fresh fruit, once deemed a necessity, is now a treat described Bloomberg. According to an index compiled by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, food prices in July were up 31% from the same month last year. On the other hand, it's safe to say that global paychecks have not risen 31% over the past year to keep up with soaring food prices and other living expenses. Consequently, low-income households are having a much harder time buying the food that they need, and more people are facing food insecurity and simply going hungry. As inflation pushes the cost of everything to skyrocket, the central bank's policies may have to be changed sooner than expected, as the agencies often disregard food and fuel inflation when setting policy because they're the most volatile categories in the typical basket of consumer goods and services. However, when ordinary people think about inflation, they don't want to exclude food and fuels, as explained by Shang Jinwei, a professor of finance and economics at Columbia Business School. Given the rise in inflation that average consumers are experiencing, I'm predicting, he says, we are underestimating the chance that central banks will take more drastic measures than central banks themselves are predicting. Unrest is something that always follows when acute food price hikes happen, and in face of the growing social tensions we've been witnessing all over the globe, this sustained increase in prices for basic staples is making some governments extremely nervous, including America's. Despite insisting that all of this will be transitory, consumers have started to realize that our leader's concept of transitory is actually translated into years of high inflation and economic pain for millions of people. When the masses become aware of the fact that most politicians in Washington and policymakers with the Federal Reserve don't seem to know what they're doing, this country will start to see some definitive changes. Thank you for watching. If you found this video informative, we recommend to you Seven Year Apocalypse, the latest book of the economic collapse writer Michael Snyder. In the meantime, don't forget to turn on the notification bell to keep up with our next videos.